Hello and welcome to another biology video. This is Preetinder Kaur for Perfect Scores. And in this video on genetics, we are going to cover the concept of gene transfer. Alright, so gene transfer, as the name suggests, is transferring the genes of one organism into another organism. The gene transfer can happen between organisms of the same species or even between different species. And that is how you get genetically modified organisms. So there are a few steps that we need to cover. The first step in gene transfer is extraction of the DNA. So DNA extraction is going to be the first step. So what is done is from a bacterial cell, we are going to remove the plasmid. And you might know plasmid if you have watched the videos on the prokaryotic cells. So plasmid is basically the small circular DNA that has the capability of replicating itself and it can exist independently as well. So it looks like a ring of bases. So this is a plasmid that we have taken out of a bacterial cell. And similarly, a gene of interest is taken from an organism's genome. Now, this is the organism whose gene we want to transfer. So, from his genome, we take the gene of interest, which is basically going to be a segment of the DNA. So, let me draw it like this. And this is done using the enzyme restriction endonucleus. So using the enzyme restriction endonucleus, that gene of interest will be cut and taken out and both of them are then going to be amplified using the polymerase chain reaction. So you're going to have lots of copies of these plasmids and you will have lots of copies of this DNA. And if you want to know about, uh, more about what PCR is, you can watch the videos specifically made on these techniques. That is DNA profiling and the polymerase chain reaction. So that is the first step that is DNA is extracted. So bacterial cells plasmid is taken and the organism's genome gives you the gene of interest using endonuclease enzyme. The second step is digestion and ligation. So let's see what happens in step number two. In step number two, the plasmid is cut again with the restriction endonucleus. So I'm just going to write RE over here. So the plasmid is cut and as a result, this may lead to short sequence overhangs. that are also known as sticky ends. For example, if the gene was supposed to be cut, let's say this is the DNA and it was supposed to be cut like this, so you may have a sticky over end hanging like this. So this part which is extra is the short sequence overhang because it's not a really big sequence. It's a very short sequence and it's hanging over the second one. So as a result, it gives you sticky ends, which actually help in the two different DNAs to fit together. So the plasmid, let me draw a bigger one. Let's suppose this was the plasmid. So using one of the plasmids that was amplified, a part of it is cut like this. So this is the digestion part of it using endonucleus and it is now added with the gene of interest. So let me color it completely so as to differentiate it. Let's suppose this is the part of the gene and now both of them are going to be added together. So they will be spliced together using the enzyme DNA ligase. So that is going to give rise to a recombinant plasmid whose major part is the original DNA but some part of it is the gene of interest which has been basically added to it 
using the DNA ligase and this new plasmid that you get is known as a recombinant plasmid because now it has combined the DNA that we need from that organism's genome and the DNA of the bacterial cell. Now you might be wondering why do we need a plasmid to do all of this. Now remember plasmid is something that can replicate itself. So you do not need mitosis or meiosis to help it replicate itself and it can also exist independently. That's why we need something that can exist independently but at the same time can also carry the gene of interest. So let's summarize. The first step is just extracting the DNA. Taking the plasmid from a bacterial cell and taking the gene of interest, that means a section of the DNA from the organism's genome and amplifying both of them using polymerase chain reaction and the enzyme that is used is restriction endonuclease. The second step is digestion and ligation where the plasmid is cut using the same enzyme restriction endonuclease and this results in short sequence overhangs or the sticky ends which I explained here. And then this cut plasmid is combined with the DNA that is the gene of interest. So they are spliced together using DNA ligase which is the second enzyme that is being used and that gives rise to the recombinant plasmid. Now what do we do with this recombinant plasmid is what we will study in step number three. So step number three is known as transfection and expression. So the recombinant plasmid, let me trigrammatically explain this. So let's suppose this is the recombinant plasmid that has the gene of interest and the original DNA of the plasmid itself. This will now be inserted into a desired host cell. So that is the third organism that we are encountering. We've already two, used two organisms to supply us the gene of interest and the plasmid. The third animal is going to give you the desired host cell. And for eukaryotes, this process is known as transfection because it's a mixture of transfer and infection by bacteria. So you can kind of learn it like that. For eukaryotes, it's known as transfection. But for prokaryotes, it's known as transformation. So let me write it down over here. And now these cells will be known as transgenic cells because they have the transferred genes. These will hopefully produce the desired trait. And when they produce the trait that we wanted it to produce, that part will be known as expression. So that is what happens in this case. Now the product may need to be isolated from the host and purified in order to generate sufficient yield. So I'll give you one example of something that happens in real life and I think you'll be able to relate to that much better. So what happens is the bacterial cell, it gives the plasmid. Let me draw a bigger one and a clearer one. So this is the bacterial cell plasmid from the human genome. A special protein will be taken out. A special gene will be taken out that will encode for a special protein. And the name is human factor 9 gene. That will be taken out and basically it helps in clotting so we call it a clotting factor these two will be combined and will give rise to the recombinant plasmid let's say this is the part of the gene and this is the remaining part of the plasmid this recombinant plasmid will be inserted into a sheep cell specifically a sheep egg that egg is going to grow up and become a transgenic sheep and 
from the sheep's milk, we are going to get the human factor 9 gene. Now you might ask, why do we need the sheep in this process? Now we need something whose products we can multiply and produce on a mass scale. So kind of commercialize it. So it will not be possible to commercialize genes from humans itself without undergoing any kind of experimentation with humans. So it is inserted into a sheep egg because it gives you one product that people can consume without any problems. So that is sheep's milk. So this stage, let me use a different color. Alright, so let me use this yellow color. So this part till here is the first step, which is DNA isolation. The second step is this one, where the recombination is done. That is digestion and ligation. The third step is this one, transfection and expression. And the last step which we haven't done but that is a commercial step which is just basically purification. So you purify it and package it in the form of medicine. So that is all that you need to do in gene transfer. And that is all that will be covered in this video. Thank you so much for watching this one.